Here are solutions to test number one for ECE 463-663 for Spring 24. The first problem looks at given a system, given the step response, find the system. In this case, I know it's a second order system because it's oscillating. To find the transfer function then, I need to find three terms. I know it's got a complex pole, so it's got a real part and a complex part. And again on top, to get the real part, I can look for the settling time that's right around here. Let's say 250 milliseconds, then A is just 4 over the settling time, over 0.25, or 16. B is the complex part of the pole. That's the frequency of oscillation. It's got one, say, two cycles in 180 milliseconds. So B is cycles per second, two cycles in 180 milliseconds. That gives you hertz. Anything English is wrong, pretty much. So times 2 pi gives you radians per second. And then C is the fudge factor. It adjusts the DC gain. Pick C so that the DC gain is right around 3.9. So put that all together. You should get something right around 19,000 over S plus 16 plus minus J69. Your answers will vary a little bit because it's hard to read a graph to four decimal places, but something around there. Problem two is given this system, find a second order approximation to it. So to do that, I want to keep the dominant pole, that's right here, and its complex conjugate. So keep the two poles. For the zeros, there's one zero that's about the same magnitude as the poles. Um, the other zero is about 10 times faster, ignore it. Then add a fudge factor on top to match the DC gain. The fifth order system is a DC gain of 2.86. Pick K to make the DC gain 2.86 as well. Gives you 48. So here's roughly the second order approximation. Now this wasn't asked for, but if I check, plot the step response of the second order system and the fifth order system. Here's the fifth order system in blue. This is the second order system. About the same system, about the same response, same settling time, overshoot, oscillation. It's a little bit different. There's extra delay. But that's typical when you drop poles. Um, the extra poles cause a delay in the system. Problem three. Given the block diagram, express this in state space form. So to do that, I would take the first guy, SX1, that's the first row. That's minus 3x1 minus 4x2 plus 2u. That gives you the first row. Um, the second one, SX2, that's right here, is X1, gives you the second row. The third row, SX3 is 5X2 plus 6U, this is U, minus 7X3, gives you right here, 5X2 minus 7X3 plus 6U. And the last one, SX4 is X3 minus 8X4. Sx4 is x3 minus 8x4. Fourth problem. Uh, find the dynamics for this circuit. And so here the trick, I'm going to use i equals cd vdt for capacitors. V is ld, idt for inductors. So for the first one, i1 is cd vdt, 0.03 sv1. That current is the current from the left. Vn minus V1 over 100, and I lose I3 minus I3, and I lose this current. V1 minus V2 over 200. What's left over is I1. What's left over is CdVdt. For capacitor 2, I2 is CdVdt. That's equal to the current from the left, V1 minus V2 over 200, minus I4. I lose I4 minus this current minus V2 over 300. For capacitor or inductor 3, the voltage is LDIDT, so that's 0.1 SI3. The voltage on the top is V1, voltage on the bottom is I times R, 3I3. And the fourth inductor, this voltage, is LDIDT. On the top it's V2, on the bottom it's I times R, 4I4. So there's your four coupled first order differential equations that describe the circuit. The fifth problem, 
is full derivatives, partial derivatives. For the partial derivative with respect to x dot, anything that's not an x dot you ignore. Just be, treat it like a constant. So here's an x dot that gives you 4x cosine of x, x dot. Um, here's an x dot, and that's it. For the partial with respect to x, treat x as your variable, everything else is a constant. So a derivative with respect to the x, derivative with respect to the cosine x, and then here's an x. Now for the full derivative, I need to take the derivative with respect to the first term, this is chain rule, just gives you 4 cosine of x, x dot times x dot, gives you x dot squared. Derivative with respect to the second term, derivative of cosine x is minus sine x, x dot, times everything else. Derivative with respect to x dot is x double prime. Now the second term, again using chain rule, derivative with respect to the first term gives you 3x dot sine theta. Derivative with respect to the second term gives you cosine theta, theta dot. And then these terms just drop down. So this is your answer. And that's test number one for 463-663 Modern Control.